Let us pray. Heavenly Father and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are grateful unto you. We bless you. We worship you. We adore you. We lift you up because of the great grace you have made available unto us. Father, we want to pray that as you look at your word, you will minister unto us. You will bless our heart. You will bless our life. And your name will be glorified and be exalted. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. I am reading from 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof from such turn away. For this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captives, silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lost, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. I read again in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in the steward that a man be found faithful. Praise the Lord. Faithfulness to Christ in perilous times is what we are looking at. Understanding of this time we are living in will give us all it takes to live above the challenges. It is perilous times, last days, latter days, or the end of the world, and so on. As a result of these is challenges, it is taking its toll on Christian lives, Christian commitment, and consecration. Faithfulness of believers is under constant threat for the conformity to the world's standard and norms in view of the multifaceted appearances and operations. It must be faced on all ground with all the weapons at our disposal. The enemy of man, Satan, is all, all out to lower our sincerity to the one who loves us and the one that you have decided to follow and serve, come what may. We cannot be careless, carefree, and handle with levity our faithfulness. Many started well in the spirit, but have drifted away into the flesh. That is what the scripture says in Galatians chapter 3 verse 3, chapter 4 verse 9. Departure from faithfulness does not come suddenly. It is a gradual process that graduates into outright backsliding and loss of faith and confidence in the supreme sacrifice of Jesus for the remission of sin and the wrath of God and salvation through the redemptive power. Because we are told, in him we are redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. It is in our, it is in our faithfulness that we enjoy his freedom and liberty. Because we have been called unto liberty. We have been called unto the freedom by God. So we are told in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, stand fast therefore. In the liberty we are with Christ and made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke 
of bondage. It is my sincere prayer that the Lord will help us that we shall not run into the yoke of bondage. We shall not fall into the trap of the enemy. We shall not fall into backsliding. We shall not fall back from our, the call that God has called us unto faithfulness and true life living for the glory of his name. I have three parts in this message. Number one is the characteristics of the perilous time. Characteristics of the perilous time. In Matthew chapter 24, I want to read there in verse 12. Matthew chapter 24, I read there in verse 12. This is the word of the Lord. Matthew 24, verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wash cold. This is a terrible thing that the Lord is revealing to us today. In the last day, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wash cold. Many. And we need to plead and pray to God that God will help us. That why some people are falling by the wayside, why some people are no more standing in the grace of God, in the power of God, in the faithfulness of God, that we should remember that many people, many people, their love will fade away. Their love will grow cold. But we need to tell ourselves, my love will not grow cold. I make up my mind, I will not in any way retard. I will not go back by sliding or going away from the will and the purpose of God for my life. This time, in its entirety, is against godliness. It's against righteousness and faithfulness. This time is a time that is contrary to the mind of God. It is a departure from the faith that we are experiencing at this time worldwide. And it doesn't matter where the nation is. It doesn't matter whether it is a developed nation, whether it is in developing nation, or whether it is in a rural area. It's the same thing. It's the departure from faith that man is noticing today. Because we are told in 1 Timothy chapter 4, I read there in verse 1. Now, the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving it to seducing spirit and doctrines of devil. Look at how devilish, how evil, how wicked, how far away this generation is from what it is supposed to be. I read that again, verse 1. Now, the Spirit speaketh expressly without any doubt without any addition to be added to it, that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. This is the more reason why everyone, old and young, must be very careful because the scripture has not left us in doubt. Give you it to seduce your spirit and doctrines of devil. Wicked things will occupy the world. Wicked things will be happening all over the place. And because of that, it is necessary that everyone and everywhere we are, we keep to what the Lord has said and we are faithful. That is why we should recognize that this time is a perilous time. Perilous in the sense that many will depart from the faith. Perilous in the sense that the seducing spirit will be the order of the day. Not only that, in Galatians, in chapter 1, I read here in verse 4. We are looking at the characteristics of the perilous time. Verse 4. Who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver all from this present evil world. Can you imagine that? This world that we are in, this perilous time that we are in is described in the Bible as present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. Praise God that we are we are being told clearly without iota of doubt the characteristics of this time so that we can arm ourselves, so that we can prepare ourselves because the battle is raging 
And because the battle is raging, everyone must prepare himself because this world that we are in now is present evil world. Not only that, we can see also in 1 John 5, 19. 1 John 5, 19. And we know that we are of God. Thanks be to God for that. Glory be to the name of the Lord that we know that we are of God. And the whole world lied in wickedness. We are of God, but the whole world lied in wickedness. Lied in unrighteousness. Lied in evil. Lied in things that are contrary to the will, to the mind of God. And as a result of that, each one must now understand that the whole world lied in wickedness. And by the grace of God, the Lord will deliver us from the evil of the wicked thing that is now happening around us. In 1 John 2, let's read from verse 15. 1 John 2, 15. He said, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. And that is the thing now. The world is here. It's with us. We are in the world. But the Lord is telling us, the word of God is presenting unto us what should be our attitude to the world. He said, love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. Oh, the world and the things that are in the world. Be careful. Because the Lord has not left us in darkness at all concerning what our love should be. He said, love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And he goes on in verse 16 to now break down what the scripture is saying when he said, love not the world. He said, for all that is in the world, what are the things that are in the world? The loss of the flesh and the loss of the, of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. You can see the loss of the flesh the laws of the eyes and the pride of life, they are not for God. They are not on the side of God. They are not the will of God. They are not the plan and the program of God, but is of the world. And it tells us in verse 17, and the world passeth away. All these that we are looking at, they are passing away. And the lost thereof, but he that dwell the will of God abided forever. You will abide forever by the grace of God. But look at it carefully. This is a wicked world. This is an evil world. Don't love the world. The things of the flesh, be careful. The things of the eyes, be careful. The pride of life, be careful. They are all there and day in, day out. They are confronting the believer. And they are waving hand to the believer to come along. To come along. To take it. To enjoy it. To be partakers of it. But be very careful. Not only that, let's look again into Philippians chapter 2 because the scripture is giving us sufficient description so that we will not be carried away in any way, in any form with what is going on in the world today. Philippians chapter 2, let me read there in verse 15. That ye may be blameless and harmless the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as light in the world. Look at the way it is described again. Look at the evil way the world is described. So that you don't, you don't partake of the world. You are not part of the world. That ye may be blameless. For you not to be blameless and harmless. The sons of God, as God has called us because we have received Christ into our life, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. Crooked, perverse, evil, unrighteous nation, among whom ye shine as light in the world. By the grace of God, the Lord will continually help us. The Lord will not leave us alone, and we shall not be captured by the world or go contrary to the mind and the will of the Almighty God. In, I read earlier on, but I want to read again 
to be able to show us more of the description of these latter days. In Matthew chapter 24, let me read it again in verse 12. Matthew 24 in verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall was cold. This is, a, this is an indication that iniquity will abound. Evil will abound. Unrighteousness will abound. And it will be things that are accepted by everybody everywhere. But we must be very careful. Not to love them. Not to be attracted by them. You cannot be of the world and be of Christ. Friendship with the world like we are told in James 4.4. Is the enmity with God. Jesus called believers out of the world because of his corruption and defilement. It is the tr it is this truth in Christ and our continuity that set us free. Because he said, You will know the truth, and the truth shall set us free. And if the Son of God shall set us free, we shall be free. Indeed. Therefore, we must understand clearly what the mind of the Lord is about the world, about the activities of the world, about the evil of the world, about the wickedness that is going on in the world, so that we don't get ourselves entangled. We don't get ourselves into the problem of the world. And we are told in John chapter 15 to show you clearly what the world is, what the world can do, the evil the world can project, and the evil that the, the evil uh, the world can bring into one's life. In John chapter 15, I read there in verse 18. If the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. Because we are of Christ, we are on one side. The world is on another side. Verse 19, I say, if you are of the world, the world will love you. The world will love its own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated you. Look at this great revelation. God saw the world wicked, evil, crooked, unrighteous and he brought us he chose us he delivered us he set us free he opened our eyes to understand and to see like titus in his epistle was writing that the grace of god that brings us salvation had appeared to all men thanks be to god it appeared to us and by the grace of god we are now in the fullness of the lord and we have seen the light we are rejoicing the light in chapter 17 of John. I'm reading there in verse 6. John 17, 6. I have manifested my name unto the man which thou gavest me out of the world. Out of the world. This is very important. That each of us must know you cannot be the same with the world. You cannot walk the way they walk. You cannot go the way they go. You cannot appreciate what they appreciate. You cannot say what they are saying. You cannot do what they are doing. You cannot see the way they are seen. You cannot dress the way they are dressing. You cannot appear the way they are appearing. Your aspiration and your goal cannot be with the world. No, not at all. I read there in verse 6 again. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou givest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou givest them me. And they have kept thy word. Thanks be to God. God gave us to Jesus. Thanks be to God that we are of the Lord. Thanks be to God for the great thing that the Lord has done. Look at it again in verse 14. I have given them thy word. And the word had hated them. Because they are not of the world. Even as I am not of the world. He said two, two cannot work together except they be agreed. We are not of the world. We are of God. We are in light. We are with Jesus Christ. And so the world cannot agree with us. We cannot agree with the world. Look at it in verse 16. Verse 16 says, They are not of the world. Clearly stated. And this is stated by Jesus. This is the voice of Jesus. They are not of the world. 
even as I'm not of the world, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I sent them into the world. Thanks be to God. The Lord has set us apart for us to show forth his praises, for us to show forth his glory. And we thank God for the great thing that we have seen here. Jesus is not of this world. Jesus is the light of the world. And thanks be to God. And because he's the light of the world, he has given us this light. And this light is the light of life. Oh, it is wonderful. You must be in Jesus before you can be faithful to him. He will shed light into your life and be able to have the light of life. It is in the light of this that you can live in the light. Beam the light. Faithfully walk in the light. This gives the victory. When you receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, you come out of darkness into his marvelous light. Like we are told in 1 Peter 2, 9. We come into marvelous light of the Lord. And the great, the great thing that... Uh, Great thing will happen, and we are partakers. Let me read that in 1 uh, Peter 2 9. 1 Peter 2 9. But you are a chosen generation. You can see that you are not just one of them. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of Him which has called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. Thank God. We are called out of somewhere into another. We are called out of darkness. We have now, in the, we are now being brought into the marvelous light. And thanks be to God for this. We have left darkness into the marvelous light. And look at it in 1 John 1.1. 1, 1. 1 John 1.1. 1, 1. That which you have seen from the beginning. Which we have heard. Which we have seen. Which our eyes with our eyes which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the world of life. Thanks be to God. This is what the Lord is saying. The thing that we have seen, the thing we have looked upon, the things we have handled and from the beginning what we have heard. This is what we are called to be faithful to because clearly what you have heard, what you have seen, what is going on around today should not dominate our life. But what we have heard, what we have seen, what we have looked upon, what we have handled should dominate our life. In Philippians chapter 4, I read there in verse 9. Philippians chapter 4 verse 9. This thing which ye have heard, I'm sorry, this, those things which ye have both learned, and receive and have and see in me do and the God of peace be with you. Thanks be to God for that. That that you have seen, that that you have heard, that you have handled, that that you have looked upon, that that is revealed to you, the revelation of God. Thanks be to God. Those are the things that the Lord is asking us to be faithful in doing, to be faithful in handling and the God of heaven be with us all in Jesus name. That leads me to the second part. Courage to persevere in trouble. We you know it is a perilous time. And when we say perilous, it means it is dangerous. It is evil. It is not right. It is not according to godliness. No, not at all. So in 1 Peter chapter 5, in verse 10. 1 Peter 5, 10. But the God of all grace, who had called us, Unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After that, ye have suffered a while. Make you perfect, established, strengthened, and said to you. Look at it from the first part. It says, But the God of all grace, the grace you need, the power you need, the ability you need, the strength you need, all that you need. To be able to stand against all the evil because he knows what is in the world. It's uh, after that, ye have, ye have suffered a while. Make the Lord will make you perfect. Say amen. The Lord will establish you. Say amen. 
The Lord will strengthen you, say, man, the Lord will say to you, wonderful. This is what the Lord is able to do. This is the courage we have by the grace of God. This is the understanding we have by the power of the Almighty God. Challenges of life come under different shades. And they confuse, they confound, confront, and counter establish convictions and stand. Look at the enemy. Look at the work that the world is doing. Look at all that the world is doing today. It's painted black, white. And it's under, underneath it is only coating the black, white. But truly, it is black. Stand still in the effect and give room. Because when anybody is... I say that again. Challenge of life come under different shades, and they confuse, they confront, and counter establish convictions and stand. Such will in fact give room to alternatives. Alternatives. The truth is there, the right way is there, but it will give room to alternatives. Why are you going that way? There's another way here. There's another thing here. There's another revelation here. There's another truth there. Giving room to alternatives that border on unfaithfulness. These alternatives, they are the ones that are referred to in Galatians chapter 1 as another gospel. Another gospel. And we should be very careful. Man wants to look for ease. An easy way. And alternative out of troubles and hardship. But the word of God has not left us in doubt because he said those that will live godly in Christ Jesus, they will suffer persecution. And because of that, we should be ready. And that is why what we are listening to is important to every one of us to take note and to be very careful so that we are not carried away by whatever is happening in the world today. We are told in John's Gospel, chapter 16, in verse 33, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace, because there is lack of peace in the world. There is lack of joy in the world. There is lack of perfect life in the world. In the world, you shall have tribulation. Can you imagine that? In the world, you will have tribulation. That be a good share. I have overcome the world. Thank be to God that in the world, there are problems. In the world, there are difficulties. In the world, there are sorrow. In the world, there are uneasy things. But the Lord is saying, I have overcome the world. Thanks be to God that the Lord has overcome the world for you, for me, for us as believers. And to God be the glory in Jesus' name. Such comes, this type of evil, they come like tribulation, like persecution, like imprisonment like denial of rights, like threats to life, like even threats to our properties and whatever you possess as a believer. Ah, they come as fear, they, they create fear in our heart. But thank be to God that the Lord is telling us, fear not. They come as rulers, they come as leaders, they come as chastisement, they come as family challenges, oppressions, disaster, Fear of tomorrow, fear of enemy, confrontation. But in the midst of all this, the Lord is calling us to be able to stand and to be unmovable in, the, in, the, in, in what is happening and in what the enemy is doing today. Let's read a few verses in the Bible to see what the way it has happened, how they wanted the people not to be able to stand faithfully, but you will stand. Because you are hearing it today, we, you will stand. In, as of the Apostles chapter 4, I'm reading there in verse 18. As chapter 4 in verse 18. And they called them, they called the apostles. And commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that, brethren? Can you imagine that, believers? That some people will be bold enough. And they will say, don't talk again in the name of Jesus. And so, it is not strange. It is 
one of the happenings of the last days. And in verse 19, the Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you, more than unto God, judge ye. It's in your hand. You are the one who will say, I won't go that way. You are the one who will say, God is on my side. And because God is on your side, and the greater one is on your side, you can boldly say, no, I will not. I will not yield to what you are saying. I will not go the direction you want me to go. In chapter 5, let's look at it in verse 18. These people will not stop. Even when you say no, never you think that they will give up. Never you think that they will not come again. If they use one method and that method didn't catch you, they will use another one. If they come one way and that way didn't catch you, didn't go over your life, or they give solution in one way, it didn't go over your life, never you say that, they will not come again. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 5, in verse 18. And laid their hands on the apostles and put them in common prison. Can you imagine that? Because of the word of God, they didn't steal. They didn't abuse anybody. They didn't go contrary to the government. And they said, oh, these people, they should be put into prison. Prison should be their place, but by the grace of God. Wherever they put us, wherever we find ourselves, we shall remain faithful. Therefore, the faithfulness that we are talking about, it involves our calling. The call of God on our life, we should be very faithful in our calling and i pray god that the lord will help you to be faithful because the lord has called us into this ministry in ephesians chapter 4 in verse 11 and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers can you see that this is our calling god has called us he called us to be apostles god has called us to be prophets god has called us to be evangelists, God has called us to be pastors and teachers to do the work of God. This is the call that God has called us. God called Moses to deliver the children of Israel. God called Jeremiah to deliver nations. God has called us also, also to preach the gospel everywhere, in all places, no matter what is happening, no matter what is going on, and the God of heaven, he will be with us. He has called us unto faithful service. That is what we read earlier on. Let me read again in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, in verse 1. 1 Corinthians 4, 1. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and steward of the mystery of God. Moreover, it is required in a steward that a man be found faithful. The Lord is calling us into his service and is calling us unto faithfulness. So we must do it in a faithful way. We must do it in an acceptable way, not necessarily your own way, not the way you want. No, we must be obedient to the word of God. That is what God has called us unto. We must be obedient to evangelism and soul winning. That is what the Lord has called us unto. Go you into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. This is what the Lord is saying. And he has called us to go out and to do it wholeheartedly without any doubt in our heart. And look at what Paul said in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26, in verse 19. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26, let me read there in verse 19. There we have it. Where upon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. Wonderful. There is the vision of the world. There is the heavenly vision.
the whole counsel of God, not half truth, not half hearted. No, the whole counsel, the whole counsel. Oh, praise God. For I have not shown to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Thanks be to God for this great and wonderful thing that will come on our way. I need to tell us also that in the midst of this, there will be persecution. There will be trials. And look at it in chapter 20 there, beginning at verse 24. Beginning at verse 24. But none of these things move me. Let me read from verse 23. Save that the Holy Ghost witnesses in every city, saying that bonds and affliction abide me, waiting for me. Bonds, affliction, they are waiting ahead. But let us look at his attitude, his steadfastness. Let us look at his way. He stood against this in verse 24. But none of this moved me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy. And the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Thanks be to God. It is wonderful. He knows what he is. He knows what he is doing. He knows what he is able to do. And it is because nothing will move him because of whom he has believed, whom he has accepted, whom he has brought into his life. So he's not shaking at all. And in chapter 21, let me read in verse 10. Chapter 21, in verse 10, the same thing. And as we tarry there, many days there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. And when he was come unto us, he took Paul's gadu and bound his own hands and feet and said, Thus says the Holy Ghost. So shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owned this gadu and shall deliver him into the hand of the Gentiles. And when we had these things, both and they of that place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. But look at the faithful man. In verse 13, then Paul answered, What means she to weep? And to break my heart, for I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank be to God for this wonderful thing that we are learning today. Thank you for this wonderful confidence that we are seeing today. And it is so wonderful. It is so glorious. And I need to tell us today that a lot of evil has entered into the world and into Christendom, and we should be very, very careful, because right now, we can see in the world, the world has legalized abortion, has legalized homosexuality, has legalized sodomy, has legalized incest, has le legalized lesbianism, has legalized bisexual, has legalized transgender, gay marriage. By the grace of God, you will not be a pastor who will be marrying a man and a man, a woman and a woman in the name of Jesus. It will not happen in our own time. The Lord will not allow it to happen by the grace of God. Therefore, we have opportunity now, great opportunity to stand for the truth, to stand for the na name of the Lord and to say, this is the right thing. This is the right way and we refuse it by all standards. Look at what is written there in Galatians 1 in verse 6. Galatians 1, 6. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from that from him that called you into the grace so of Christ. From that from him that called you into, into the, the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Which you will not go there. Which is not, go there. There. Which is not so another that trouble but there you. But there be some that trouble you pervert and the gospel of Christ. Pervert the we, gospel of Christ. An but do we, heaven, an angel from any heaven, other preach any other gospel than unto that you which than, you than that which we have, have and received we unto you. And we are preached unto you. Let him be accursed. Let him be accursed. Don't give him room. Thank be to God. The Apostle said in the other, in the other, in the other chapter room. that they didn't so give this room evil that to is coming, this not for uh, one evil hour. that is coming, verse not for verse one hour. Verse, 10, verse 9 now says, As we said before, so say I now again, 
If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be a call. Keep your faithfulness. Keep it right. And make sure that you are not allowing the enemy to have any inroad into your life, into your belief, into your conviction in the name of Jesus. We can dis dis describe faithfulness in this way. Unbending in conviction. Uncompromising in challenges. Unalloy in consecration. Uncommon in commitment. Undefiled in conduct. We can say unchanging in confession. Unquenchable in confidence. Unfeigned. Oh, not, not in charity. By his word, by his promise, by his power, by his comfort, by his support, by his grace. Always in the presence of the Lord by faith. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord is good. The Lord is wonderful. The Lord is glorious. That is able to do all, is able to do us good. Before I move to the last uh, to the last part, let me quickly look at Second Timothy chapter three. Let's look at it there in verse fourteen. Second Timothy chapter three. Let's look at it in verse fourteen. They continue thou, and the things which thou hast learned, and hast been assured of. Knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Continue. Continue. Don't go away. Let me read that again. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of who of, uh, of knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Thanks be to God. The Lord is faithful. The Lord is good. The Lord is wonderful. The Lord is glorious. And by the grace of God, his grace will see us through. His grace will keep us on. His grace will be sufficient unto all, no matter in Jesus' name. Let me go to the last part. Commitment to the preaching of the truth. Commitment to the preaching of the truth. Let us know. And we should know also. Just like it is written in the book of Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, C.S the Lord. And so today, let us be committed unto the gospel. Let us be ready to do it in all way, in all form, in all shapes, and the God of heaven will be with us in Jesus' name. Not only that, let us stand, let us do it by his grace. Stand by grace. Because we are told in 1 Corinthians 15 10, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, I am what I am. It is not by my knowledge. It's not by my understanding. It's not by anything that I have. It's not by education. No, not at all. By the grace of God. By the grace of God, I am what I am. And His grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet yeah, not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Grace, grace, grace to serve, grace to remain, grace to do the right thing, grace to say no to the enemy, grace to say yes to the Holy Ghost, grace to move ahead from grace to grace. And by the grace of God, this grace will continually keep us in the name of Jesus Christ. Not only that, by his sufficiency, not by your sufficiency, because we are told in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, let me read there in verse 5. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Hallelujah. Our sufficiency is just of God. Everything and all things about all, all that we are today is by God, is of God. It's not by ourselves. No, not at all. Not only that, it is by, as we pray, as we commit ourselves unto God, as we do not allow our strength to deceive us, as we do not allow the situation around us to confuse us, because we are told that it should be by the prayer of faith. In James chapter 5, in verse 15, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if any have committed sin, 
they shall be forgiven him. Praise God that the prayer of faith will avail more. The prayer of faith will do us good. The prayer of faith, verse 16, confess your fault one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth more. Brethren, let's pray for one another. Brethren, let's encourage one another. Brethren, let's not leave one another out. Let's not allow evil of this world to overcome all. Let's not allow the power of the air to overcome all. The power of the devil to overcome all. Because we need the power of the Holy Ghost. To be able to move ahead, we need the Holy Ghost. And that is what Jesus Christ promised in Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 in verse 8. That ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. We can see the boldness that came on the apostles. We will rather obey God than men. Even though they knew those people could cut them into prison, those people could torment them, those people could beat them, but still the Holy Ghost that has come on them, he has wonderfully, gloriously empowered them and empowered them to be able to do more than they could ever imagine. And his presence is always necessary. So you must make sure, brothers and sisters, Make sure that every day you keep the presence of God with you. Wherever you are, whatever you are doing, make sure that you are not doing anything that will make God to leave you, that will make his presence to leave you. Remember the psalm, he said, this one thing do I do. That will I seek after, that I may dwell in thy house all the days of my life, to behold his beauty and to acquire in his temple. One thing. The presence of the Lord must go with all. Let us make sure we are there. In the day, we are there. In the night, we are there. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, I read there in verse 29. 1 Corinthians 1, 29. That no flesh should glory in his presence. Oh, thanks be to God. Because we are told in verse 26. For ye see your calling brethren. How that not many wise men. After the flesh, not many mighty, nor many noble are called. Ha. But look at our call in verse 27. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Thank God, whoever you are today, by the grace of God. Whatever you are today, by the grace of God. And let us make sure this commitment is by the word of God. It's word because we are told in Psalm 119, it said, Where with us shall a young man cleanse his way? Verse 9, verse 11 said, Thy word have I eat in my heart that I may not sin against you. In verse 105, it said, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The word of God will guide us. The word of God will direct us. We cannot miss it. When we are walking, when we are living according to the word of God, the power of the Lord, the hand of the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And also, we should be heavenly minded. In whatever we do, to be faithful, we should be heavenly minded. If you are not heavenly minded, you will derail. You will go astray. If you don't depend on him, you will go astray. That's what he wrote in Colossians chapter 3 in verse 1. If then, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. We are Christ seated on the right hand of God. Oh, look at where we should be. Look at what we should do. Verse 2 now says, set your affection on things above and not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, dead to the world. And your life is hid with Christ in God. Thank God for that. Glorify the name of the Lord for that. Bless the name of the Lord for that. We thank God for that. You can be faithful in life. You can be faithful in ministry. Joseph stood and he remained. You will stand by the grace of God. I will stand by the grace of God. Not only that, we saw also that Daniel promised in his heart that he will not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat. These are faithfulness. Whatever they have had, whatever they have learned, they make sure 
that those things are not leaving them. Daniel, oh wonderful, was to, was was told not to pray unto God, and he opened his window towards Jerusalem, and he prayed, and he called on God. The enemy saw him. They threw him to the lion's den, but the Lord did not allow lion to consume him. No, not at all. That is faithfulness. Brethren, be faithful. Brethren, be committed. Brethren, don't allow the enemy to overcome you. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Oh, they were told that they would be thrown to the lion's den. But thank be to God. They knew that the greater than lion is on their side. Greater than lion is the one that is helping them. He's the one that is their Lord. He's the one that is their God. Um, I want to assure you today, greater than lion, greater than Nebuchadnezzar, is the one that is on your side. Oh, look at it in uh, Daniel chapter 3 verse 17. If it be so, our God who we serve is able to deliver us from the, from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thy hand. Oh, King, hallelujah. The Lord will deliver us. No matter when the enemy will come like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will leave a standard against you. But if not, they knew that God would deliver them. They now said, but if not, be it known unto thee, O King, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Which God are you going to serve today? Which God are you turning to today? What is the situation that is changing your heart today? Remember, you cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve God and the world. You cannot be a friend of the world and be a friend of God. No, not at all. Therefore, we must wake up. Therefore, we must rise up and we should stand like Ruth stood. Oh, when offer was going, Ruth stood. He remained because of the God of the Jews. Oh, yes, temptation will come, trial will come, suffering will come, whatever will come on your way. The Lord is giving you overcoming grace. By the grace of God, you will overcome. Let me hear your amen. What is the reason for our faithfulness? Why are we faithful? Why? Faithful to who loves us. Faithful to the one who died for us. He said God commended this love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. His love is unchanging. It's compassionate. And we are told in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12, this is why we must have to be faithful. But for the which cause, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed. And I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which I committed unto him against that day. I know whom I believe. Do you know whom I believe? That is why we are faithful. Oh, whether heal or mountain or whatever he see. And Job said, I know that my Redeemer liveth. He loves me with everlasting love. And greater is he because he, he, his, his love is so great. And greater love has no man than this, that a man will lay down his life for his friend. And because he has laid down his life for us, oh, we can rejoice. We can glorify the name of the Lord. Brethren, let me look at briefly test of faithfulness. Test of faithfulness. Before I leave our test of faithfulness, let me read in Proverbs chapter 30, verse 7. Proverbs chapter 30, let me read there in verse 7. Proverbs chapter 30. Verse 7. This is the word. Two things have I require of thee. Deny me them not before I die. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. Lest I be full and deny thee and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. May I say, this is a test of faithfulness. The, fact, the, 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 the test of faithfulness here reaches poverty. And look at the way. The writer of Proverbs said it. Let none of these things come my way. Let them not disturb me. In the same way, temptation came to Jesus, he overcame. Trial came, 
he overcame. Persecution came, he overcame. Poverty. Ah, all those things, they came his way, he overcame. And I want to say also, imprisonment came, the disciples and the apostles, they overcame. Disaster came, they overcame. Enemies came, they overcame. Sicknesses and diseases came, they overcame. And I want to say to us today, we can overcome. We shall overcome. The victory is ours. The victory is guaranteed by him. And by the grace of God, he will do it for us. He will do it. And our time of victory has come. Our time of overcoming has come. Our time has come. By the grace of God, every agony that may come our way, we will overcome. And Jesus Christ has left us an example that we should follow in his stead. Let us follow the step of Jesus as our faith is being tested every day. As our faithfulness is being tested every day, let us make sure that we do not allow the enemy in any way to deceive us or to lure us away from the will and the plan and the program of God. Let me read to you in John chapter 17 in verse 4. John chapter 17, let me read in verse 4. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou givest me. By the grace of God, you will glorify God on earth. You will finish the work that he has given you unto do. That is Jesus Christ. And we thank God also for the wonderful way the Lord has helped Paul the Apostles. And he has this to say in 2 Peter chapter 4, I'm reading there in verse 6. 2 Peter 4, 6. For I am now ready to be offered... And the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them who love is appearing. Dearly beloved brethren, ah, I want to say to us today that Jesus finished well. Paul finished well you will finish well. Before I round it up and we pray, there's a song in our gospel hymn and song. In hymn 21, it said, will your anchor hold? Will your anchor hold in the storm of life? When the cloud unfold, their wings of strife. When the strong tides lift and the cable strain, will your anchor hold? And, drift, uh, and will your anf- anchor drift and firm remain. Oh, let me read the the, 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 the chorus now. He said, will your, an, will your anchor hold that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll? Fast it to the rock which cannot move, grander, firm, and deep in the Savior's love. Let's rise up on our feet and promise the Lord, I will, I will, I will, I will do it. I will remain, my anchor will hold in the storm of life, no matter what happens, no matter what the enemy is doing. Prepare yourself, brethren, be purposeful in your heart, be patient in your journey, be persuasive and, and persevere in what you are doing. Pray every day, commit yourself unto God every day. Oh, press on, don't look back, press on, press on, and make sure your heart is on the fire. Your life is on the fire. No evil is on your way. No enemy is on your way. The enemy cannot overcome you. No, not at all. Because the Lord our God is greater than the enemy. No matter the way he comes, he will fail. No matter the strategies he's using, he will fail. Oh, remember Solomon, that man, because of his riches, he went away from God. Samson, because of his strength, he went away from God. Pray God that whatever will come into your life and will make you to remain, to be now become unfaithful, the Lord will take it away. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for hearing us. Thank you because you're a good God. Thank you because you're a wonderful God. I want to pray for my brethren. I want to pray for myself. Oh, we have laid our hands on the plow. By the grace of God, we are not looking back. Nothing will make us to look back. Satan will not make us to look back. The world will not make us to look back. The grace of God will be sufficient unto all. The power of God will be with all. And by the grace of God, we shall endure to the end. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
In Jesus' name, we have prayed.